So hello and a welcome to the computer lab. So in today's video, I'm going to be covering a app which is called Snip and Sketch. Now, if you've never used Snip and Sketch, it has been built into Windows for a couple of years now. Uh, but there was an original tool called the Snipping Tool, which you can see here. I also have it uh, on my taskbar. Uh, and it's because I use it quite a lot that it's on my taskbar and have it sit there because I do do quite a lot of screen grabs. Having said that, this new Snip and Sketch is a bit more integrated into Windows 10, so I have been using that quite a bit more now I've uh, got used to it. So I thought I'd do a quick tutorial video on how to use it correctly. So like I say, can I open the old snipping tool up by typing snipping tool? And then let me just open a browser window actually, like so. And then we'll open the snipping tool up. And then this was the old one, I'm not going to cover it in any detail, but basically you had a few different options. I tended to use the rectangular snip quite a lot. You'd pick that and then draw around the shape you want to grab. And then you've got this option, then you can save that file and draw on it and stuff like that. Like I said, this video isn't about this one, so I'm not going to save that. But that was the old snipping tool. So I'm going to open Snip and Sketch up by going to the bottom. I could just click this icon here, uh, but you can do a search for it if you want to do, which by typing Snip, uh, Snip and Sketch. And you can see it's the one that's popped up here. You can also click on apps if you just want to find the app itself. So I'm going to open the app up. And in fact, I'm going to pin it to my taskbar while I've got it here. So it stays down there and I'm going to put it next to my snipping tool like so. so you see the difference in the icons. So we've got snip and sketch open. Now, before we go any further, what I'm just going to do um, before I show you how to take a snip and a sketch and draw, draw on it and sketch on it is how to set it up on your keyboard. Now I've got mine set to use the print screen button on my keyboard. It just makes things easier. You don't have to look for the app uh, on the taskbar or open the program up. And the way that you do that, you can open Snip and Sketch up. You can see it says by pushing Windows logo, Shift and S to uh, snip what's on the screen. And that's without actually opening Snip and Sketch. It'll just take a copy to the uh, your clipboard and you can paste that into your Word document or whatever else you're working with. I tend to put mine on the print screen button. So the way to do that is you can do it in the settings here. So you can go into settings and you've got in the settings, you've got this use the print screen button to open screen snipping. So if I click on that, it will then say, are you sure you want to open another app? Which is basically saying, do you want to open this settings app? So click yes. And then I scroll to the bottom and then use print screen shortcut. So use the print screen button to open the screen snipping. All that means is you push the print screen button on your keyboard and it opens up snip and sketch. You can also get to that by if I close that, if you just go into your settings menu, go into ease of access, down to keyboard, and it's the one at the bottom print screen shortcut. So I tend to have that picked up already. So that makes it a lot quicker to take a, a snip and sketch or a screen snip, should we say. So let's get into the menus itself. So I'm going to open just a browser. This just gives me something to take a screen grab of. And I'm now going to go into snip and sketch. So I'm going to do that by pushing the print screen button. So now it gives me this menu right at the top. I've got a couple of options in here. So my first one, as I hover over each one, I've got rectangular snip free phone snip, I've got the window snip, and then a full screen snip. So starting from left to right, let's click this rectangular snip, which is the one that I use most often. So I'm going to highlight that one, and I'm just going to draw on the box, and I might want to just do this rectangular shape there. Grab this uh, Google Chrome browser, and then it picks it up, and then saves it into snip and sketch like so. All very good. Close that one. Print screen button again. Go free form, and here I can pick up a free form shape. So I might want to draw sort of a circle around here. So I'm going to grab that, draw around on free form. Not very, it's more of an egg shape, I think, but you get the point. So you can do a free form sketch. Close that one. Print screen button again to open skip and, um, snip and sketch. And I've got the uh, window snip. Now, because I've got two screens on this particular PC, it will um, take an actual full window snip of this particular screen that we're recording at the moment. So I'm going to click that one. Click on the actual screen and it picks up on the whole of the screen and takes the grab that way. And the reason why I mentioned that is because if I hit print screen again to open snip and sketch and use the full screen snip, it will take a picture of both of my screens. Like I said, because it's a dual monitor PC, I'm going to click on that. You'll see, you'll see now as I open the preview, it's taken a picture. I've just got the browser open on the other one. Um, Mozilla, I think, browser on the other page. And it's obviously got a grab of that as well. So that's all very good. That's how to grab different types of uh, snips uh, using the print screen button and using snip and sketch. And the other thing to cover, if I hit the print screen button again, let's do the rectangular snip and let's grab Google Chrome browser. 
like so. And then we'll open the actual Snip and Sketch app itself up and I'll close the web browser down behind. Let's make this a bit more full screen like so. And then I'll just cover the menus from left to right. So this on the left hand side, if you've opened up just Snip and Sketch and you're grabbing directly out of here, you can do that by pushing this here and it will take a brand new snip or you can push Control and N once you've got the actual app open. You've also got some timed functions by clicking the arrow. So you've got Snip now, Snip in three seconds and Snip in 10 seconds. And that can come in handy if you uh, wanted to move your mouse out the way or you waited for a certain point in a video. Uh, so it's good to be able to time it. You've then got the undo and the redo icons, which are currently uh, blanked out because we've got, we haven't done anything to this particular document. You then on the center menu here, you then have the touch writing. Mine's not a touch screen, so um, it doesn't really affect uh, what I've got going on here. But if you've got a touch screen, sort of a Surface Pro or something like that, Microsoft Surface, then you can use that. You've then got the markers. So you've got the ballpoint pen, you've got the crayons or pencils in the middle, and then you've got the markers um, or the highlighter. Um, and we'll cover each one uh, briefly as we go. So let's look at the ballpoint pen. So I'm going to click on that. You can pick the different colors that you want. You might want white, you might want a nice green. And once you've got the color picked, you can then alter the size of that ballpoint pen. And you might want it sort of 19 points, something like that. And then you can just draw freehand on the screen, like so, using the ballpoint pen. You've then got the same with the uh, crayons next to it. So if I pick a red, make sure it's nice and thick. And you'll see as I apply pressure, it's sort of this pencil or the crayon effect. And if I hover over a certain point, it's the same as if you're colouring in. It will go darker and darker and turn into red. It looks a bit pinkish because uh, obviously it's a crayon, so I'm pushing lightly or skimming over quickly. The more you draw, uh, the more it actually fills the colour in. And last but not least, you've got the highlighter pen. If I pick up on that one, and this is the chiseled, uh, like a, sort of chisel end marker pen or highlighter pen. And what I mean by that is I'll show you as I draw. So I'm going to leave it on the high, this bright green. You've got a limited, bit more limited colours with this uh, marker pen. But as I draw sort of sideways, because it's a chisel pen, it will draw a nice big thick line. But then as I move down, because it's a chisel pen, it does it a thin line and like so. And you'll see it sort of affects how you write. So if you're writing, it's a bit too thick to be writing uh, like that make it a bit less you get this nice effect where it sort of puts a straight line across so there's the different um, pens and pencils you get to use you've also got the erase button next to there so if I want to erase this section I'll click the eraser up click on that you can uh, know it's uh, picked because of the blue line underneath and then I just hover over the thing I want to delete and then sort of click on it and it will delete it like so so you can delete individual points, individual arrows by using the erase button, or you can use the back button. So if I click the back button, it will undo the erases first and it will go the other way around. So if I back, 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 and then it starts to undo like so. On the erase button, you've also got erase all ink. So you click the down arrow just underneath the erase button, you can erase everything. So click that, gets rid of everything off the actual screen. And the next one we've got is the ruler and the protractor, which is just next to the eraser here. So if I click on the ruler, you'll see it brings this ruler up on the screen. Now the thing to note as well, which I'm not covered actually, let me just turn the ruler back off by hitting ruler and then hitting the bounding box, uh, the selection box, it turns it off like so. And the thing I was gonna to touch on is the crop. Uh, it's best to crop your image before you start working on it. And the reason I say that is because if you crop in the middle of an image and crop this section out here, and you've drawn lines on it, it will leave the lines on the actual image. And I'll show you what I mean right at the end. So if I draw something on this particular um, grab screen grab of this Google web browser, and if I draw the lines outside, you'll notice the crop only affects the image that's cropped behind. So it's best to crop the image to the size that you want and then draw on top of that from there. So let's get back on with the ruler and then we'll hit the protractor in the middle. So the ruler's got this, uh, we can move it around by left click on your mouse and dragging it along. You can then alter the angle by left clicking in the middle and then rolling your mouse button up or down in the center scroll wheel, to, uh, the same one you use to scroll up and down a page. Uh, and maybe you want to set it at 45 degrees like so, and you might want to draw a line across this corner of the web page. And the way that you draw a line against this is obviously set your angle what you want by rolling your scroll button in your mouse, set it to the angle you want, say 45 degrees. Pick the pen up, let's pick a orange, in fact, now let's use the ballpoint pen and then we'll go with uh, orange in here. Make sure it's nice and thick so you can see the line. 
And all you do is pick the pen you want and then draw along the edge of the ruler. So like so. I'm going to draw all the way along. Like that. And this is when I was... Let me get rid of the ruler again now. You'll see what I mean. So I'm just going to zoom out a bit. Or zoom in a bit with this here. Like so. And you can see the actual marker pen that I've drawn, it draws out this bound, this grey bounding box, not to the image that you've taken a snip of. And that's why I said if you take um, a crop the image, it will crop it and leave these lines on. So it's always worth um, cropping the image first and then you can draw your lines on afterwards. Okay, so that's how to draw using the ruler. I'll just do another line just to show you again. So again, pick the ruler up. I'm going to leave it on at zero. I'm not going to change the angle. I'm just going to leave it on zero. Maybe have my ruler there, and I might want to move, uh, have a line that's sort of intersecting with this one. And let's just change the colour just because we can. Leave it on ballpoint pen, and I'm going to draw along the line here, like so, and have it drawn on. There we go. So that's how to draw a straight line against the ruler using uh, Snip and Sketch in Windows 10. So the, the last one that we've got next to the ruler is the protractor. So if we click on the ruler icon, we've then got the protractor underneath. This works the same way. We can move the protractor around the screen, like so. We can make it bigger and smaller by scrolling the mouse wheel in and out, like so. So maybe we want it this small. And we can draw a full shape around there. So we can make sure we've got the ballpoint selected. Maybe have it a little bit thinner. Pick up where we want to draw from. So I'm going to start my pen on here, on the zero, and move it around like so. All I'm doing is keeping my left mouse, uh, mouse click button in left mouse button clicked in uh, and then let go when I get round to my full circle 360 degree circle get the protractor off and now I've got this perfectly formed drawn circle in snip and sketch I can also do half sizes so I might want to put a half uh, moon across here um, like so let's do it there leave the green on in fact now let's change the colour Let's go for that bit more garish green and then maybe I want to start the angle here so I'm going to draw from there so it's saying that's my zero point draw it around like so and then maybe stop there get rid of my protractor I've got this half moon shape as well so that's how to draw circles and straight lines using snip and sketch um, we've already touched on the um, crop tool and where and how to use that the next one along in the far right hand side we've then got the zoom button and here we can zoom in and out the image like so or we can view actual size by clicking the button like so You've then got the save button and when you click save in snip and sketch you get this options so in here i've got one there test snip and sketch i'm going to pick that that's what my file is going to be called test snip and sketch in windows 10. i can save as type as a png a jpeg or a gif leave it on png click save it'll probably say you want to overwrite i'm going to click yes and there we go that's the image saved to my uh, that was actually to the downloads folder you might be saving yours into the pictures folder You've then got a copy, which the copy allows you to copy the image you've just done and then paste that, say, into a Word document. You've also got the share icon there. If you click on that, that takes you to, uh, you can open up your mail app or you can uh, send directly to some of this in your contacts. And the one right at the end, the three little dots, you've got the open file. So you've got Snip and Sketch open. You can open a file directly into Snip and Sketch to draw onto it. The interesting one is open with here. So if you've got some programs on your um, computer that you like to use to edit photos or edit this type of thing. Uh, for example, I've got Affinity Photo. I might want to open this particular image in Affinity Photo. Click OK. It then opens the program up that you've told it to go to and then we'll open the image within that program and then you can edit away in your chosen program like so. I'm going to close that one down. Go back into the menu. You've also got uh, print send feedback and the last but not least is the settings one if we click on there we've got this option to use the print screen button to open screen snipping which we uh, talked about at the beginning if we clicked on that do you want to switch applications go into your settings and there you can pick your print screen as we spoke about at the beginning i like to have mine on because it's just quicker to use that button auto copy to clipboard so it basically saves it directly to your clipboard if you've got that one on Asked to say the snip before closing. So if you got that one uh, set to on, once you've edited and tried to close snip and sketch, it will automatically ask you to save it. Say, no, you sure you want to close, save this instead. Multiple windows, so that if you're doing multiple snips in Windows using the snip and sketch, that will open each snip in a separate window. And you've got the snip outline, so add an outline to your snips. And that's pretty straightforward and obvious what that one does. Just adds an outline to the actual uh, snip itself. 
And that's it. That's how to use the Snip and Sketch app that is built into Windows 10. So I really hope this video was helpful. If it was, please do hit the thumbs up icon. Please also hit me up with any comments below. They are always appreciated. And if this video has at all been helpful, please do subscribe to my channel. Every subscriber is appreciated. And thanks again for watching at the Computer Lab on YouTube.